All right, so good afternoon and probably good morning uh, from the very early Europe. I will be, as I said, moderating this session online together with you. We do have our colleagues on site, uh, namely Levy. In case if something happens, he will be able to help and to uh, to jump on that moderation. Uh, so um, I'm Yulia Mornes. I'm the founder of the Youth IGF, and it's an absolute pleasure and a privilege to um, uh, to have this open forum together with the EU delegation to the IGF and um, the members of the European Parliament. Uh, I would like uh, to uh, welcome them. Uh, we do have uh, um, other speakers um, uh, present in, in, in the room as well. So I would like to say hello to Christian Silva Bushoi. Uh, you are the head of the European Parliament delegation to the IGF. Uh, Mr. Bushoi, maybe you can uh, introduce the members of the parliament present in the room and with you. Uh, so we, um, uh, we, we can see and we can know who is present and who we can address. Um, we also have with us a few young people and leaders from the youth IGF, uh, together with the representatives from the .EU uh, present on stage. And I believe we do have also the European Commission present in the room. Um, Mr. Pierce O'Donor, I don't know if uh, Pierce O'Donor could also join the stage so we we can have uh, this uh, conversation. Uh, Mr. Um, Christian uh, Silvio Bouchoy, please, uh, maybe you can introduce the delegation. Good morning for Europe, uh, good afternoon uh, in Kyoto. Uh, we are very honored uh, to be here uh, today. Uh, uh, in a, I would hope, a very interesting discussion with the uh, youth IGF. We had also last evening a uh, bilateral uh, discussion with a uh, few of the young people very much involved in IGF activities, and we understood a little bit better some particularities in some parts of the world. But uh, for the moment, uh, I would like just to introduce uh, the colleagues. Uh, so I'm Christian Bouchoy. I'm a member of European People's Party. Uh, president of the Industry Research and Energy Committee coming from Romania. I have also from uh, uh, EPP party also and uh, coming from Slovakia, Mr. Stefanec. Um, thank you very much. I have uh, from uh, Renew coming from Denmark uh, together with us today, Mr. Lokegaard. Also so from Renew party coming from Slovenia, Mrs. Irena Jeleva. From uh, uh, the left, uh, coming from Cyprus, uh, Mr. Niazi Kizilure. And uh, coming from France, member of the ID group, uh, uh, Madame uh, Marie Doshi. Uh, Madame uh, Kumpula Natri, member of the Socialist delegation, will uh, be here in five minutes maximum. Maybe I will not have the chance to introduce her then, but. Uh, I, I'm sure that uh, for all colleagues, uh, because they uh, are involved in different legislative dossiers on different areas, uh, if there will be some specific questions, uh, please allow me to invite at some point uh, each of my colleagues uh, to intervene to give brief answers or brief comments to the uh, issues that uh, we are supposed to discuss. I will finish by saying that the uh, European Parliament uh, is uh, strongly committed to uh, support IGF activities. Uh, we participated in most of the IGF forums. Uh, for me, it's the second time, but for uh, Mrs. Kumpula Natri, for instance, it's the sixth time. And there are colleagues also uh, that uh, are veterans in participating on behalf of European Parliament to IGF uh, uh, forum. Also, uh, uh, together with some other chairs of different committees involved, uh, I initiated uh, 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 letter to President Roberta Mezzola to have a permanent working group on IGF in the European Parliament with colleagues not necessarily part of different delegations but interested to follow and to participate actively in uh, IGF uh, initiatives and I think that uh, this uh, request of us will be approved. We are very committed to the multi-stakeholder approach. Uh, we'd like to understand better the realities and particularities of, of uh, some parts uh, of the world. We uh, are in close contact with uh, colleagues from different other uh, parliaments uh, in order to 
be inspired or inspire it or uh, uh, apart to have the best legislation. As you know, European Parliament already adopted legislation on data governance, uh, on uh, Digital Market uh, Act, Markets Act, on uh, Digital Services Act, uh, also uh, cybersecurity. We have strong cybersecurity legislation, not also institutions, but also critical infrastructures. And now uh, European Parliament in June adopted its position on Artificial Intelligence Act. I know that is uh, a lot of interest for uh, many participants to IGF, uh, and it was also mentioned in some uh, uh, speeches, uh, the European model on looking on the risk uh, assessment. And uh, now we are in the interinstitutional negotiations with the Council, with the Member States, and the participation of European Commission, and I see here a director uh, in European Commission and his team, uh, to uh, upgrade, uh, to improve, and to have the final uh, uh, the, uh, legislation on artificial intelligence. And of course, we are looking forward to develop other legislation uh, uh, on digital ar area uh, and uh, internet. Uh, uh, and this is something that uh, uh, could be discussed in the coming uh, uh, moments. Thank you once again for having us here. Thank you so much, um, uh, Christian Silvio Bouchoy, for for this introduction, for the introduction on the on the European uh, Parliament delegation priorities for this AGF. Um, but also for the information about this working group on, on the IGF, and we do hope actually uh, that this working group that potentially could be approved by the President Metzola uh, can have a channel also of communication with the youth IGF and with the young leaders. And by saying that, I would say that you practically uh, made the introduction to the subject of our discussion today, uh, because what we would like really to discuss in a very tangible manner it's a kind of framework, why not this group might become that framework or part of that framework on the sustainable participation of the young leaders in the discussion and in the in, in internet governance. So the we wanted to, you know, we would like to propose you this um, a very short open forum to be structured in, 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 the, in the following way, to have three parts of it. So to discuss practically uh, the uh, the recommendations the use IGF and the young leaders made to digital compact, uh, but also uh, which is based on on tangible examples. Uh, namely, uh, we would like to discuss the examples on how actually one of the recommendations was able to be already implemented. Uh, the second part, we would like to discuss about the declaration for the future of the internet and the participation of the young people in this process. And the third one, that's the Hir uh, Hiroshima process, and also what will be the say of the young people in it. So by saying that, we, the youth IGF, made these six recommendations to Digital Compact, and one of the recommendations that was part of that, um, and we discussed uh, the previous years, and I believe uh, your colleagues uh, from the European Parliament was uh, were present with us. Uh, Kumpula Natri was the chair last year and present, uh, and uh, where we discussed this uh, this recommendation. So one of the recommendations was to establish a kind of a youth advisory committees um, uh, within the uh, private sector structures, so to advise and really work together. Uh, advice on the uh, young leaders and the youth views on uh, different policies within uh, the corporate uh, corporate structures. So um, uh, by by saying that the the same year uh, the um, URIT, which is operating the .dot eu, uh, together with us, uh, took this opportunity and we established together with the .dot eu, the youth IGF and and URIT, the youth advisory committee. Um, and, and that's quite unique, I think. Um, we do know about another example, which is in the Russian Federation, and um, another example uh, probably is in Australia. Um, so that's quite unique, and I would like to call uh, very quickly on Joao. Joao is present in the room, I believe, or even on stage, I see him. Uh, so to his, he was member um, of, of this first Youth Advisory Committee. He's still member of this Youth Advisory Committee to the dot EU, to URIT. And I'd like Joao uh, ask you a very um, straightforward question, and please be short because we have a very limited um, uh, time today. Uh, 
uh, with the subject we would like to discuss. So could you share with us your experience in terms of uh, what you were a what you were you were able to bring to uh, URID and was uh, and what actually URID brought to you? Very shortly, Joel, please. Yeah. So <clears throat> good afternoon, everyone. I'm João Pedro. I'm coming from Portugal. Um, hi, Julia, online. So hope all, hope things are not too early there. Um, about URID and about the youth committee, I think it's in. Uh, it's actually, as you mentioned a little bit, so uh, the idea of having diversity is always good and uh, including the voice of the youth um, and including it even within private and um, uh, other institutions, it's, it's important. But I think it's, it's relevant to, to think about how can this be a value proposition for both sides and uh, it's been the challenge uh, of many other projects i've participated but i think it's it's something that works at um, at the youth committee for for yuri so the idea and so far we've been able to pitch and uh, present opportunities of internet governance uh, to yuri so uh, the idea and f from the beginning was to advise and uh, provide uh, feedback on uh, the internet governance ecosystem to you read. Uh, I think there's a lot of um, things that we could um, continue or and start doing. Uh, moving forward, maybe taking a look at policy uh, from within the, um, the you read structure, um, evaluating, uh, for instance, strategies in terms of um, the dissemination of um, the dot EU in, uh, so in the different regions of Europe and um, yeah I mean contributing to the activities of um, of URIT that are not really part also from a business perspective um, it's been in the end where we've been providing more value I would say Thank you, Joao, and thank you for, for being actually indeed short. <laughs> um, um, thank you for this statement. We will ask the members of the European Parliament to comment on, on that initiative, what they think, how can be, uh, how it can be implemented uh, in, 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 in generally. But I would like to turn to Regina Fuksova. Regina, you, you do work uh, with the DOT you read. Uh, you arrived at um, uh, probably when you arrived to dot read, but by dot to use or apologies, but maybe I'm mistaken uh, when the youth advisory committee was already established. So I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, what is the impact uh, for uh, for you read for dot you of this youth committee, and um, um, how can we make this, um, you know? This idea of establishing youth committees, and particularly the youth committee within URID, uh, in this you know working in a sustainable manner. Regina, thank you very much. Short. Yes, I will try my best. Thank you very much, Julia. My name is Regina Filipová Fuksová, and uh, I work for the .eu registry. Actually, uh, my inventory number in the company is quite low. I arrived already 2007, so well before the committee was. Uh, established, but uh, due to uh, some changes in our company, I uh, um, ended up as an industry relations manager last year, and uh, happily in my uh, portfolio, I also uh, got this honor to um, be the liaison for the youth committee. Uh, we have now a year of change. Uh, we onboarded, or we are now in the process on, of onboarding new members. And uh, we will be present, among others, uh, also at the .eu day, which takes place on the 16th of November in Brussels. So uh, those of you who are going to participate, and we would really be pleased to see you there, you will have, you will have also the opportunity to speak not only to long-year members, but also to new members, and they can share their uh, impression. Uh, the Youth Committee is a very let's say, well-established part of our corporate governance. Uh, uh, we are trying to include the youth and young people not only in uh, this committee, where uh, the aim is to um, like 
inspire each other and spread the word about the activities uh, for us to get a fresh view for the uh, members, hopefully, to get a new uh, impulses for their future careers uh, in and beyond internet governance field. But we also uh, offer activities uh, uh, for uh, smaller children at basic school within the another activity of the European Commission, the, dot, uh, the Code Week EU, which is happening now in October. And we make always uh, a use of our presence in different member states. We have four offices, so we are reaching to local communities, uh, at least in those countries. And then for high school uh, students, we have an art competition uh, called uh, Safe Online. Uh, those of you who visited our booth uh, could see the very nice artworks. I just brought an example of one of them. Uh, like taking into account, or not only taking into account, they were created by teenagers 15 to 20 years old, and you would not get better results from uh, professional designers. We were really amazed. And we use this as an opportunity to uh, start discussion at the school with the teachers, but also um, uh, indirectly with the parents about cybersecurity, internet governance, what does it mean for them. We offer an introductory presentation to start this discussion. So uh, from our perspective, it's a very enriching for uh, our, also for our further development and uh, even though it's not directly connected to generating, let's say, some growth or uh, hard numbers, uh, the spreading the awareness uh, is, uh, is an important part. And we try, because we are a member of a technical community, so it's not very typical, and we spread these best practices among others on a central level with other peers and try to inspire them to go this way as well. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Thank you for sharing the experience and updating on actually on the activities of the youth committee and for for a number of people I can imagine present in the room and online also, you know, um, just bringing the information that that exists. Um, I, I do would like to call on the members of the European Parliament, um, uh, Mr. Bushoi or someone else from the delegation who would like to actually comment very shortly on what you just heard on that experience and also to you know maybe raise a question on how can this be implemented uh, at a larger scale um, uh, but also why not globally that's a great example great example coming from Europe from the dot eu so what is the opinion on that mr bushoy or someone else from the delegation that maybe I don't maybe the youngest uh, member of uh, the delegation of european parliament delegation mrs uh, irena joveva as I said, from Renew Group from Slovenia. And I also like to welcome, uh, he joined uh, immediately after I made the presentation, uh, Mr. Sergei Lagodinsky from the Greens uh, from Germany. Mrs. Uh, Jovova, please. Thank you very much. I it's OK if I stand here? Or do I? OK. Uh, so hi, <laughs> once again. Um, I'm actually also the youngest one who was elected in Slovenia, which is a little bit sad because it took such a long time. And I was 30, you know, I'm not, I wasn't even that young. So um, I'm really very, um, very happy. Uh, every time I have a chance to speak with um, younger generations, and I'm also very happy that the European Parliament as such is, you know, getting younger, if I may say so, uh, because it's always a nice mix to have experienced members, but also, of course, uh, the younger ones have to be um, involved and uh, included. So um, I really appreciate um, everything that you told and the examples and experiences. Uh, it's very nice to hear that. Uh, I think uh, that um, mm, the younger ones could be more included regarding the European institutions uh, or their work as such. Um, I try to include them as much as I can you know, um, regarding my uh, work or the fields that I cover, if I may say so. Um, I also, I mean, this is my first IGF, so I have no idea how it, I have nothing to compare it with uh, the previous ones, but uh, it's really nice to have also the young IGF, um, you know, um, uh, emphasizing or uh, being part of it like so um, so concretely um, um, I have maybe a, I mean my main I was a journalist before uh, before I came into politics so my main topics are actually um, 
the last few weeks or even months, um, the Media Freedom Act that we prepared, we actually adopted uh, the European Parliament stance, uh, I think it was on this last October plenary uh, session. Yeah, okay. The long days and the time frame and everything. Yeah, uh, so we are also starting with the inst interinstitutional negotiations here. So it's also, you know, connected with uh, internet, obviously, especially the disinformation and misinformation that we are all, um, you know, um, um, dealing with, uh, more or less. So maybe here a question or a comment from you guys would be helpful um, because, of course, the younger generation is the most exposed since being the most also on the internet or the digital world is the most... Um, is the I mean, the physical and the digital, digital are the same, more or less, now, I think, uh, in these times. So um, I feel that the digital literacy as such is underestimated. Um, I'm not feeling that we are all aware how important this is. So maybe I would have a question here. How do you think or how do you feel about it? Do you think that um, the schools should do more or the politicians should do more? I mean, we try to do as much as we can, but of course, at the end of the day, we have um, limited um, I mean, we are limited with the member states or whatever. So this is my question, and if you have any questions regarding the media freedom or disinformation or something, I will be happy to, to answer. Thank you. Thank you. If you allow also a short interventions f intervention from Mr. Stefanec, EPP Slovakia, one of the senior members of the delegation, but very close to the youth uh, movement. Thank you, Chair. Great to be uh, with you today. Yeah, also senior people have to take inspiration from young ones, definitely. And digital future is about the young people, so it's great to be, uh, be with you. Uh, but uh, if the question is uh, how to make um, our contacts uh, more regularly, how to establish uh, our, our cooperation, I think it's... Um, possible to organize events, special events on uh, different topics at the European Parliament, so we are very welcome, so that's the pa part of the answer, number one. Number two, we have already uh, regular meetings uh, which are organized also by our European People's Party, it's so-called Youth uh, Forum, it is in September, it's one week where young people can come to the European Parliament, they can present their respective ideas and there is most ideas about digital future, I can assure you. So there is a lot of uh, inspiration talking about the new legislation. So we can get also more inspiration from you. So you are welcome to participate participate at Youth Forum. You are welcome to come with new ideas which we can develop at special events. And also uh, the answer number three is we can organize also a special event between us and between um, Youth IGF, so uh, th that's uh, possible also to do it uh, relatively soon in two, three months in the European Parliament. In terms of contents, particularly I'm working on the digital decade uh, development. I'm working uh, also on the addictive design right now and also on uh, online uh, children protection. So if you are also working with children, uh, maybe we can get more inputs uh, also how they see it, what is dangerous for um, uh, from their perspective and all the inputs uh, also are welcome. So looking forward to participate with you and to cooperate with you. Thank you very much. Back to the moderator, I think. Uh, maybe someone would like to intervene from the youth participants, young uh, participants. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bushoy. We we will maybe just follow the and we will give the opportunity for to the young people to um, to to intervene in uh, in in a, in a couple of minutes. I would like just to thank you. The thank the interventions and um um you know from the members of the European Parliament and indeed the youth IGF. We do work with children and on the question of child and protection because we were one of the organizers and founders of the uh, child online protection. Um, uh, initiative of the ITU and as well the youth IGF established more than 10 actually safe internet uh, uh, committees uh, outside of Europe so mainly in, in African countries working with our African friends and so that's the information we'd like to share with you and indeed will be very interesting to, to organize this um, topic based um, um, debates. 
Uh, but I would like just to be back to the um, URATE example and to follow what uh, Regina Fuchsova mentioned, uh, the .eu days, and actually what we established as well together with the .eu, it's a, uh, it's a special category of the .eu award, which is going for, and it's, um, you know, focused on young entrepreneurs. And that's also a second achievement, I would say, in a very tangible manner that came from uh, one of the recommendations of the youth IGF uh, to the digital compact. Uh, but uh, let's go to the second topic, which is the declaration of for the future of the internet. And um, um, as you know, as you might know, the youth IGF also actively participated in a number of meetings, namely in, in the Czech Republic under the presidency of the Czech Republic. Uh, and I would like to turn to Pierce Adonoy from the European Commission um, and uh, Pierce Adonoy is a director of the um, Future Networks um, uh, Directorate at the, at the European Commission. Pierce, what is your opinion about the, uh, what, what, are, what are the priorities, first of all, of the European Commission on the DeFi, but also what uh, actually, what is your opinion in terms of the impact that the young people brought uh, to the DFI during uh, these, you know, different meetings where we took part and participated on site with the with the European Commission, and by the way, invited by uh, by by your colleagues. Thank you. Is this on? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Hello, Yulia. Thank you very much. Thanks for this opportunity. Indeed, uh, on day zero of IGF, we had a very successful day uh, half day long workshop on the Declaration for the Future of the Internet. Um, and uh, successful from several points of view, partly because we had a number of m countries that had not previously been closely associated with the process who were present for the uh, plenary session, but also for a breakout session uh, among uh, governments, and who then brought that back into another session uh, at the end where it was clear that there was strong support for the principles. There are five principles in the DFI. But that process was also aided by the fact that we had rapporteurs from the youth IGF who acted as animators and, and, and uh, reporters back to the, the plenary session, uh, who showed the involvement of youth, but also the interest uh, of the youth community in what is being done in the DFI. If I could, if I, without going into too much detail, if I could uh, summarize it as follows, is that while it is a track which is led by governments who sign the Declaration for the Future of the Internet, the purpose is to pull them more closely into the multi-stakeholder process of which they are already a part and specifically into the process of the IGF where we see all of the other communities already working hard uh, in order for them to be made aware of the concerns and to be guided by civil society, academia, uh, but of course the, the, the other um, members including of course the business uh, segment. Uh, so that when they come as member states of the United Nations to negotiate the GDC, they will be fully aware of that input. And the input from uh, the youth IGF is actually very much uh, what has been said by the members of parliament here, is that we're talking about digital future, so we are talking about what is of most concern to the young people today, and where we, and I'll speak as one of the grey heads in the room, we have an obligation to ensure that we, 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 we make a governance system that works and that answers, responds to their concerns, to your interests, because you're here in the room and online. And uh, we want that process to continue. So that, uh, that when we talk about uh, human rights, for example, uh, or when we talk about more process-oriented things, such as internet governance itself, that you, are fully aware of what's going on and using the network with you, which Youth IGF represents, you can actually inform your members as to why it is important that they are at national level talking to your governments to convince them that they should sign up to the Declaration for the Future of the Internet. If they are to state that they believe in democratic principles, if they believe in uh, maintaining human rights and the human-centric nature of the Internet, then clearly this is a forum which will allow them to speak with like-minded countries, but also to influence the outcome of the GDC process and the WSIS plus 20. I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Pierce Donor, for, um, uh, for 
um, for giving us your opinion, the opinion of the European Commission and DFI, and 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 you know, and uh, and and um, uh, not taken on how how we can uh, you know um, help and assist more in uh, in um, with the DFI and the implementation of the DFI uh, as the youth IGF. I would like now to turn to um, uh, Natalie. We have Natalie Terkova from um, Terkova, I think. Uh, apologies for pronoun for mispronouncing your name. Uh, from the Czech Republic, and I would like to ask you, um, you know, the um, in the DFI we can find the um, um, the recommendation on the collaborative research. You're a young researcher from in the Czech Republic, so what kind of opportunities you would like to see uh, for you uh, within this DFI as a young researcher? Very shortly, Natalie, please. All right. Uh, thank you so much for the question. Uh, it's actually surprising that I'm also a uh, PhD student focusing specifically on digital literacy and digital skills of children and adolescents. So it would be a pleasure to also have more conversations later on. But to keep it short and to answer the question, I would like to maybe highlight a few research opportunities that I personally believe would be very much needed. Um, firstly, it would be the need for comprehensive online risk assessment because we I believe we must delve into the emerging online threats and vulnerabilities affecting children to inform policies and industry standards to really help protect their child rights online and secondly as we are just highlighting uh, this a lot uh, the multi-stakeholder approach and those like collaboration studies I would say are vital because governments, the companies, academia, and um, educators as well, and civil society, they must work together effectively to reduce online risks for children. And the research can really help us to assess the impact of these collaborations. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie, and thank you for uh, for being so short in it. That that's appreciated. So that allows us to have a discussion afterwards. Um, I would like now to go to our third uh, point. Um, but before, I would like to quote um, uh, the member of the European Parliament, Brando uh, Benifei. I don't know if Brando Benifei is with us in the room. If not, uh, we would like to quote him from yesterday, actually, and he said on stage. If you do not engage, they do not care. And it is also the duty of institutions and society to give them instruments to be involved. But if they refuse to do, uh, then others will do in their place. And I think that's actually uh, a good summary of what we are trying to reach and discuss here today. Uh, really how to, what are the instruments uh, that the young people can have in order to be, you know, fully involved and um, bring you the tangible examples. And I would like to go uh, with that um, to the third point of the Hiroshima process, you know, that has been discussed a lot during this IGF uh, 2023 in, in Kyoto. We're following online and the Levy present uh, from the youth IGF from our team I was following on site as well. So I would like to ask the members of the European Parliament, you know, the vision of the, uh, well, to, to ask the question on the vision of uh, the European Parliament on the Hiroshima process, on the generative AI, but also how do we, how do you see the role of the young people uh, globally to be involved in this uh, Hiroshima process and its potential implementation. I don't know, um, um, uh, Mr. Boucher, who would like to maybe yourself or other, you know, members of the delegation would like to. Yes, I will just say two sentences, and then I will invite two colleagues uh, very knowledgeable uh, on this, uh, Mr. Lagodinsky, who's a shadow and he will be involved also in the negotiations, and uh, Mia Petra Kumpula Natri, she was vice chair of. Uh, Standing Committee on Artificial Intelligence. So I will kindly ask them to briefly uh, comment and uh, explain a little bit European Parliament uh, vision. Uh, as I said in the introductory remarks, I'm very happy to see interest, uh, uh, a lot of interest uh, about uh, European, uh, uh, European initiative on artificial intelligence, uh, uh, the risk-based assessment, uh, but also uh, what European Parliament issued as position, uh, the most important is the fact that uh, we'll uh, not accept that artificial intelligence should be used in mass surveillance, uh, 
We have issues about biometric, using biometric uh, artificial intelligence usage. Uh, uh, and in the same time, of course, not banning uh, generative AI, uh, trying to regulate. Of course, uh, we looked uh, mainly to the safety, to the ethical aspects. Um, it recommitted the committee that I'm chairing also Im gave an input uh, related also to the business case, to the growth that artificial intelligence could bring to economies, to companies, to individuals, also some benefits, but um, uh, in the same time uh, looking to the challenges and how it can tackle these challenges. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, we are the first uh, continent uh, regulating uh, uh, in a way, or starting to regulate because I th I'm sure that uh, this will evolve a lot in the coming years. Uh, um, uh, the artificial intelligence processes. And uh, uh, I know that there are other approaches. Yesterday we met uh, US delegation to the IGF. Uh, we understand a little bit uh, better uh, the vision in United States with the members of the African uh, uh, parliaments. Uh, we understood a little bit how they, they look and how it they could be inspired by what European Union is doing. You mentioned Hiroshima. Uh, process in uh, Japan and uh, even the Prime Minister of Japan mentioned uh, the interest and the concern and also the vision of um, uh, great nation of Japan related to this. So uh, clearly uh, participation in IGF also inspired us a little bit more uh, on how we can uh, address uh, artificial intelligence uh, legislation. But two short interventions from colleagues. Uh, I start with Mr. Lagodinsky. Uh, you have a microphone here. And then I kindly invite for a short intervention, Mia Petra. Um, thank you. It's great, great to be here and uh, a great question. We are now, as you know, in the middle of a uh, trilogue, uh, which is a negotiation between European uh, Parliament, uh, European Commission, and the Council, so the member states. Uh, the position of the Parliament uh, is clear. We want, um, we do not want to ban uh, uh, artificial intelligence, as some uh, have um, m m were misled to think. We do not want to ban foundation models or generative AI, whatever term you want to use. We would like to regulate them. Um, and uh, most of AI is not regulated at all. Uh, we have a high-risk approach where the regulation only is on um, special high-risk applications um, and on generative uh, AI. Uh, we can discuss about how this uh, regulation take place. We, of course, understand that we will not advance if there is no international cooperation. And from that perspective, Hiroshima process is a great step forward. However, for many of us, the concern is that by using Hiroshima process to place uh, our dialogue with, um, um, with providers and uh, with developers, solely on the basis of code of conduct, we will distract us from the real regulation of this technology. And this is something that citizens expect. There is a lot of unease, uh, and you know the letters about banning AI or putting moratorium on AI. We do not want to go that far, but we want to give people and to give uh, our partners in Africa, for example, who are watching very closely, uh, what we're doing, to give them orientation that would be in the realm of regulation. Not over-regulating, leaving room for innovation, but also innovating in laws. And this innovative approach is something that the Parliament presented. As I said, and we can discuss this if you're interested, we are in the process of meeting together and, and me, me, uh, uh, kind of balancing out our uh, view with the view of member states who would like to be very careful. They want to protect, of course, uh, small and medium enterprises from Europe who would like not to be regulated, understandably. Well, we're saying we have to walk a middle ground because it's not just about industry and it's not just about businesses. It is also about fundamental rights. It's about environmental standards. And it's about uh, uh, our view of how we place human being in the center of, in, of this innovation. I will stop here, happy to discuss this, and I will uh, pass the word to uh, the colleague. Please, Mia, thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, Che, and thank you all, all young participants. Uh, very short also. The Hiroshima, I think, uh, links well with the AI Act that European is, uh, Union is doing because we are not isolating ourselves from the world. We will look forward to having the multidisciplinary uh, approach and, and also uh, enjoy discussing here on the multi stakeholder forum. I must say that also in, uh, in uh, IDA, the AI in the digital age, the special committee we had, we worked for one and a half years with all the possible stakeholders, more than 100 specialists were, were talking to us, European parliamentarians, and then Commission gave the proposal, we were mature to look what we want. And it is to continue the, the trails that we have had in the Europe that we want the internet to be human-centric. Uh, what is built on the internet should be human-centric and, and respect to fundamental rights. And sometimes coming from this innovation and industry committee and, and di uh, did also work, for this legislation there, we are not innovating out. We are uh, giving some quadrails uh, like a framework because then often somebody said, why are you regulating anything on AI? I said, what are you planning to uh, uh, do with AI if you are scary that high risks might have some rules? So make a comparison like medicines. If you doctors say that take that medicine, do you want to first sign consent? maybe <laughs> with uh, your risk, but if you swallow the bill. So we are kind of wishing that AI systems on the market have some risk-based security analysis and keep it globally open so that we can have interoperable systems and so on. So this is one more uh, aspect on that. So Hiroshima, having more uh, G7 countries to work together, we have been using uh, OECD and, and whatever, UNESCO's, all other uh, defining how, what is the AI actually, do we try to give some framework legislation on? So I welcome on that sense that there are more countries taking it seriously and, and looking for the better future with less threats. Thank you very much. Back to the moderator. Thank you, Mr. Bouchot, um, and thank you for helping us <laughs> with the moderation. Yes, we, we um, feel that you are here with us, but sometimes uh, it's <laughs> good to... The uh, sun is coming. Yeah. We, we have the, the morning and the sun coming, so we are... We're with you right now. So thank you so much for to the members of the European Parliament to briefing us and bringing the detailed information on the processes going on on AI on the um, you know from the legislative and policy perspective. I would like to uh, turn now to Ananya. Ananya, you are on on stage. You are from uh, from India. You are the young leader. You participated in a number of different programs, capacity building, and etc. And uh, Ananya, uh, your interest is on AI. One of your interests is on AI. And I would like to ask you, how would you like to see young people to be involved in the, uh, in the implementation of, dif of, of different of the regulations all over the world? And, you know, or at least to have your say, but to have your say on a, uh, on a sustainable manner, I would say. Ananya, you have the floor. Thank you very much for inviting me today. I am Ananya. I am the youth advisor to USAID Digital Youth Council. As a young person who is very closely involved in the design and implementation of the digital strategy of an international agency like the USAID, here is how I think young people could be and should be involved in the implementation of the Hiroshima process. First of all, I want to emphasize that it is crucial that young people are involved in any process related to anything digital. As a generation of young people who are born into digital age, digital technologies influence our aspirations, ideas, and lives from the very moment we are born. Hence, I strongly contest the usage of the word future stakeholders for us young people, because in the digital context, young people, due to the ubiquitous penetration and presence of technology in their lives are nothing less than equal and current stakeholders. Therefore, they must be provided a platform right now to share inputs and proce on processes and policies which will massively influence their lives, like the Hiroshima process. And I will very briefly enlist three uh, things that I would want to happen. The first one is to ensure that young people from diverse backgrounds, socially, educationally, and geographically, have a seat at the table, like you see right now, because I'm not from the European region. So thank you very much for you know, walking the talk. 
Uh, we should make young people part of decision-making bodies, like I heard about the URID body. Um, committees or working groups related to the Hiroshima process. I would also suggest hosting consultations, youth summits, site events, networking sessions, conferences like IGF, um, exhibitions, educational programs, and other such community engagement activities which enable the youth to share their ideas, their experiences, thoughts, suggestions, projects, and initiatives that align with the goals of the Hiroshima process. But I would insist that any such fora be held at local, national, and international levels so as to make the process more accessible, inclusive, and locally relevant. Second, as young people tend to be one of the biggest consumers and producers of um, social media content, it would also be a very good and feasible idea to indeed leverage digital platforms and social media to engage young people in the Hiroshima process. We could do that by creating interactive online spaces and use uh, social media campaigns, hashtags, online events like webinars to raise awareness and mobilize support from and with the youth. And finally, it is always important to acknowledge just because we are young does not mean that our contribution was not instrumental enough. Hence, we must recognize and celebrate the contributions of young people to the Hiroshima process by highlighting their achievements, stories, and initiatives through awards, scholarships, or media coverage. This will also inspire any other such future processes to include more young people in the dialogue. I'll just briefly end this by saying that there is nothing for us without us. And thank you, Yulia, again for inviting me. Thank you, Ananya. I think we have to thank you for a strong message that uh, probably has been taken. And thank you for this strong voice and for, you know, uh, tangible proposals, I would say, to, you know, what, what can be done. To continue on that strong and positive, um, but well, I mean, our open forum, it's generally positive, but to continue to this strong, um, on this strong youth voice, I would like to give the opportunity to uh, other young people to raise their questions and maybe afterwards turn to uh, to our uh, to our leaders, to the members of the European Parliament and the European Commission and the private sector to comment uh, and to answer their questions. We do have Levi on stage. Levi, um, you've been very patient. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, you are from Zambia. Uh, Levi, do you have a question or maybe would like to raise an issue um, to the members of the European Parliament and other uh, senior leaders present in the room, Levy. Uh, thank you, Yulia. Uh, so uh, let me make a comment and then I will pose a question to the European delegation and people in this room. Uh, I'm Levy Siansege from Internet Society Zambia chapter, but I also head the Zambia Youth IGF. Now, there have been concerns about AI, um, misinformation and disinformation, and Quite honestly, to some extent, um, misinformation sometimes actually has been perpetrated by certain government officials in my region, uh, in Africa. I don't know about the European Union, but I'd like to believe in certain cases it's been so. Misinformation or disinformation, right? Now, three quarters of the internet is used by the youths. They have a lot of innovations, and uh, one of the uh, European uh, delegate made mention that it's also nice to get inspiration from the youths. Them being majority of the users of the internet, I think they have quite a number of solutions to some of the world's problems. And having less interaction or involvement in, in making decisions or policies about internet governance and uh, internet laws, to some extent I feel it becomes unfair. And if we're talking about the future of the internet, then what future are we building if we don't get their involvement to the most? So just building up on what Ananya said, my question then would be, how deliberate uh, is the European Union in terms of ensuring sustainability of youth engagement in policy and governance related issues, especially when it comes to technology and the internet space? How deliberate is the European Commission ensuring that there is sustainable engagement in as much as they are learning from the youths in the European Union, but across the entire continent or across the entire globe, how is it deliberate about being sustainable in engaging the youths to make these decisions? Because the youth, youth internet governance forums are one of the platforms where you can actually get to see 
what the youths are thinking about and some of the innovations they have regarding how they envision the future of the internet. But if we are creating a, a sustainable future for the youths, how about being deliberate in engaging them? I end there. Yulia. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, thank you for the question and statement. We'll be going in uh, in a two minutes sharp to the European Parliament uh, delegation for their comments, you know, and discussion. Just would like to take another question online because you know we, we try to to be inclusive as much as possible, and indeed we need to you know to encourage this online participation. We have a question from Muhammad uh, from Pakistan. From the Pakistan, uh, Muhammad, you have one minute, please. Uh, you do have a question, please do raise your question um, and be in camera. Thank you, Mohammed. you have the floor. Um, hello, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, I hope I'm audible. You do. Please continue. All right. Yeah, so I've been listening to the discussion for a while now, and uh, I've seen that the honorable members of the European uh, Parliament, as well as the the fellow, uh, as for my impression, first of all, my name is Mohammed Amarali, and I am the Generation Connect Youth Envoy for the Asia Pacific region with the International Delhi Communication Union. Um, my question has been that uh, the members of the of the committee have been uh, discussing about the artificial intelligence and the cybersecurity, and uh, the youth fellows have been discussing about the inclusion of youth in the overall process. One particular aspect of the internet governance, and that has been my quality of interest as well has been the uh, the digital governance and the cooperation sector and uh, the question here would be that how does the the uh, the stakeholder how do the stakeholders look into the participation of youth within the digital governance and the uh, cooperation sector because um, as uh, ananya uh, mentioned that the youth are the current stakeholders and of course they are the future stakeholders as well um, they are the ones that are going to embrace this change of digital transformation in the first place and then passing it on to other generations. So is there a mechanism in place or in the pipeline where youth would be included in the, uh, in the digital governance uh, infrastructure as well? Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you for your question. Thank you for being short. Uh, now we would like to turn to the members of the European Parliament for your comments. Uh, uh, Christian Silvi uh, uh, the, the floor is yours, and uh, the floor of uh, is um, in the hands of the members of the European Parliament. If you want to thank comment, you. thank thank you so much. Uh, uh, the two questions are very much related, and uh, they are about the main issue discussed today: the uh, need to stronger and um, uh, more clearly involvement of uh, young people, of youth. Uh, when uh, decisions are made uh, uh, related to digital uh, legislation, but also to future artificial intelligence. So uh, how sustainable is the youth uh, participation? Uh, you heard uh, Director O'Donoghue, uh, you heard the colleagues, uh, the will is very clear at the EU institutions. Uh, uh, the youth uh, were very much involved until now uh, via the consultation processes via the participation in different formats and initiatives of political groups in the European Parliament. Uh, of course, some of the members of European Parliament, as you saw today, are uh, young people uh, very much connected to, to the youth. But I think we should do more. We should do more in order to have uh, maybe a, a better coordination and uh, a formal consultation and formal dialogue. And IGF youth could be a permanent and formal stakeholder uh, for uh, European legislators. Uh, very short intervention, if you allow, because uh, uh, Mr. Brando Bonifei, the colleague that also was quoted, uh, and a rapporteur for artificial intelligence uh, joined us. He was uh, in uh, other meetings here, because there are many meetings uh, very interesting for, uh, for our colleagues. Uh, just also to comment on this. If, if any other colleague that did not have the chance until now to take the floor would like to say something also very shortly, please make me a sign. Uh, Brando, please. You can use that uh, microphone or you can come here. It's how you would like to do. Maybe come there. So I think this, this topic has been uh, quite uh, relevant for you. I've seen that uh, from my speech on the first day, you, you TG, IGF took exactly that excerpt for the social media when I mentioned the need 
for uh, uh, the involvement of young people in the design of these uh, uh, policies and uh, also in their governance and enforcement. That's exactly what we are trying to do with the AI Act because we have included uh, a clear um, in, in the AI legislation at the European level that we are negotiating, we included a uh, clear um, reference to the need for a permanent involvement of stakeholders, not just uh, academia, but also uh, and business, but also civil society, including uh, young people. This is, I mean, we are still negotiating, but in the parliament text that we are defending in the negotiations with the member states uh, to get a final text of the law, uh, it is quite extensive because it's considered to be needed to do this kind of consultations um, for many steps of the um, application of the of the of the law but also for its update uh, I need to also and I, I hope this can be a model that we uh, continue in this direction uh, I agree with what colleague has said that uh, youth IGF uh, should be uh, an important uh, uh, permanent interlocutor for uh, this work because more and more it came clear also in these uh, discussions that uh, in, in these days that uh, the international uh, uh, dimension is, is crucial. Uh, also our work, uh, more a legislative domestic uh, European work uh, as a necessary uh, uh, international global dimension, it comes very clear. Uh, Hiroshima pro process was mentioned earlier um, it, it, we, we are working, thinking of it, of this, of this global effort. And so it's crucial that we have uh, a, a global youth involved. In fact, and I conclude on this, I must say, as a politician, on a broader uh, reasoning, that um, it has been extremely important, extremely helpful, that young people have mobilized so much for uh, climate issues. Uh, they have... Uh, driven the debate in a way that I think was very important. I think we need to find the ways, so it might not be the same, but the ways to mobilize more uh, young people, more youth associations, also around the, we can say, the tension and the possible outcomes, uh, possible outcomes of the tension between democracy and uh, new technologies, because I think this is, this is the point. Thank, thank you. you, thank you so much, Brando. I know that uh, we are uh, almost done with the time, and I see, Perfect. I think someone from the organizers uh, coming and maybe reminding us that, uh, yeah. We have three but minutes. Uh, we have three minutes, but we have two people uh, queuing, if uh, the moderator allow me just to, because maybe uh, she doesn't see them uh, in the room. Uh, queuing Let's to try the microphone. to take uh, one question, maybe. Um, uh, maybe just very we have two youth in the room to yeah, yeah. take to the presentation. Two short questions. We can take them together well, that, and maybe address yeah, them. Please, please ask the question without making any statement because we don't have any more time. So ble please be very, very short. Where you have one minute. <laughs> yeah. State your name also for yep. the record. No, well, thank you very much. This is Herman Lopez from the Youth Standing Group of the Internet Society, part of the board. <clears throat> it's great to see that also. India and Africa are involved in the discussion, but how can we from Latin America also get involved into these discussions about AI? Because we, like you see, people from all over the world, but Latin America, so thank you very much. Thank you. Let, let's, shall we, shall we uh, answer this question uh, first? We take the no? both and then I will, uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Very short. My name is Nadia Czechia and I, I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> And I represent uh, the European Dialogue on Internet Governance. I coordinate the youth activities of the European Regional IGF. And my question to the MEPs is, what is your definition of meaningful participation? At Youth Take, we've been working on what, that does that, what does that mean and working with youth stakeholders to understand how are their activities. And we are asking you to reflect on this. And for this, we do have a publication that we would like to invite you and also to invite you to your dick to uh, reflect on how we can have more youth participation in, uh, uh, of youth around Europe and uh, allowing them to integrate into the system and take on leadership positions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Julia, if you allow me just to give two short uh, yes. answers to the questions, uh, and uh, I will stand because uh, maybe it's uh, on uh, Latin America. Uh, clearly, 
uh, there is uh, a lot to 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 be done together to work together to be inspired by each other you know that european union european parliament have strong ties uh, with uh, countries from uh, from latin america as we have with uh, with uh, africa we were happy to meet yesterday members of the african parliaments i'm not sure if there is a network also in uh, latin america uh, comparable that could be an interlocutor on the internet governance and digital uh, artificial intelligence issues. If there is so, uh, it will be good uh, once we have a permanent working group in the European Parliament to start working. And the youth dimension, of course, could be extremely important. On uh, involvement of European uh, youth IGF, uh, and I see that you made the first excellent step. You discussed with the director O'Donoghue because European Commission is the uh, key player and the uh, I kindly invite you and uh, encourage you to, to take into very much serious the consultation process of legislative acts. You know that European Commission is doing that. Uh, it's a public consultation. Uh, the stakeholders are very much involved. Uh, and uh, the Parliament only asked the uh, European Commission, and we saw there is a strong commitment there and uh, uh, a strong will to take into serious, to take on board the, the relevant uh, and important uh, uh, comments uh, and uh, of course uh, inputs uh, on this so this would be when the legislation is prepared the public consultation phase then of course uh, uh, talk to the co-legislators when we uh, amend uh, modify improve the proposal of european commission you saw the openness of colleagues uh, uh, go directly to the rapporteurs to the coordinators of the political groups in the relevant committees and also once again once we have the permanent uh, the permanent IGF working group together with other initiatives and other interest group or intergroups and of course the relevant committees you have many interlocutors and uh, I'm sure that will be very open to, uh, to your uh, 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 participation and contribution which is indeed uh, very valuable. Uh, thank you Christian Silvio Bushoi for um, you know for answering these questions thank you we have to thank you for um, for all your interventions we would like to thank all members of the European Parliament present in the room we will probably once again quote uh, Mr Benfe uh, afterwards with his proposal to have the permanent youth IGF you know um uh legislative work together with the parliament um as well as other members of the of the delegation on uh, you know uh, precise uh, topics uh, with that we have to end our session i would like to thank all young people uh, from the czech republic india portugal zambia uh, pakistan um, europe other countries present in the in the room uh, to uh, for your statements and questions would like to thank the european commission Pierce Donoy, uh, for being with us today and of course dot eu uh, present in the room and all other participants thank you uh, until next time uh, we'll continue the discussions um, with you online or offline thank you a special word of thank you for uh, julia our moderator actually i was the first making the proposal of the permanent representation i'm joking it is good that uh, 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 <laughs> yeah we, we are very committed to, to be in a permanent dialogue and uh, a special thank and appreciation for uh, the moderation during COVID times i chaired the ITRE committee with colleagues in different European capitals with uh, different presidencies. I know how challenging it is to, to moderate from distance and uh, the moderation organization was excellent. And on behalf of European Parliament delegation, I would like to uh, thank uh, youth IGF and young people present today here or online. And uh, we are really inspired by what we heard today and by their uh, commitment to be part of the best solutions for the future of internet governance. Thank you.